Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to tell you guys how I personally price coins. I hope this video helps. Let's get started. Before we get this video started, we wanted to know what coin shows are you going to um, in January of 2022. We're actually going to be at the Conroe uh, Money Show and a few other local shows in Houston and in Dallas. Um, so leave those comments below because we're interested to hear what you have to say. A few videos back, we actually took a look at a collection and priced everything out. You could take a look at that video up at the top. Um, but in that video, we discussed the four things that you need to price coins. You need coin facts, gray sheet, sold comps on eBay, and you also need your knowledge of the market. And we're going to do a brief overview of all four of those things in this video so you guys understand it. Gray sheet is basically wholesale pricing and what Gray sheet thinks you should pay for certain coins. Um, and basically you pay, I think, 30 to $35 a month to have this service. Um, and it's really what a lot of the coin dealers use uh, to price their coins. And that's why it's important um, when you're looking at bigger items like we're going to show in this video. Price Guide is also an app you can use on your phone or on your computer, um, just like you can use Graysheet. And the reason why this app is helpful is because it has actually current comps or current sales for the coins that you're actually looking up. And it also provides populations of coins in certain grades, mintages, and also true views. So overall, a very well-rounded app that you should download. The reason why we use Graysheet and the reason why we use PCGS CoinFAX is because they're both price indicators at what we should potentially buy a coin for and what we should potentially sell a coin for. Sometimes Graysheet is high on a coin, sometimes Graysheet is low on a coin. Sometimes PCGS is high on a coin, sometimes it's low on a coin. So when you use both of these in sync, you can actually figure out where is a good place to kind of spend the money on this coin and where is a good place to actually offer this coin to the public in terms of a sale. eBay is also a very helpful tool because you can actually look at the sold comps on there and use your best judgment when pricing your coins. Uh, and we're gonna show you a quick video right now on how you get to sold comps on eBay. So just look up a generic coin on eBay, for example. Um, and say you want to look up what it's sold for. Um, you can actually go and press the top right filter down menu. Uh, once that pops out, you can scroll down, press completed items and sold items, and then it'll refresh your screen and give you what coins are selling for right now. Another thing to have in your tool belt is to go to a lot of shows or work with a lot of dealers on a constant basis. This can not be done for everybody, but when you can do it, it gives you a knowledge of the market. And it also allows you uh, to hunt for certain collectors that you might have um, on your client list. Now that we've done an overview of those four tools, we're actually going to use them on five coins for you today to give you guys a practical, um, in real life use of all of these strategies. The first coin we would like to show you guys today is this nice 1909 SVDB graded VF30 by PCGS. Um, and basically, I start by taking a look at Graysheet first. Graysheet has this coin in VF30 at $925. And that's kind of a, a low bid that you should start off with. This is kind of what dealers want to pay for certain coins. And then they're going to add that premium on top of it. And so when we want to actually check out a retail value of a coin like this, we're going to go over to CoinFAX. CoinFAX says this coin, um, full retail, should go for around $1,150. So we're already starting off with a current gauge between $925 and $1,150. And then what's really good about CoinFAX is that you can actually uh, look at the current comps of the coin. And so one says that it sold in November of 2021 for $1,000. Another one sold for $1,125 in November. Um, and then another one sold for $1,000. So you're kind of seeing that current trend there. And that's kind of somewhere where I would price my coin at. Um, I actually have this one priced on the website for $1,150. Just based on the qualities it has. 
the last thing that we want to check is eBay comps. Um, as you can see, there's one that sold for $1,001 on here. Another one sold for $1,125. And the last one sold for almost $1,100. And the fourth practical tool for the 1909 SVDB is that, one, is the coin rare? Um, will I have a buyer for it? And does it command a premium? All of those are a yes for this current coin because of just how rare the coin is in this condition. In this video, we're getting down the building blocks uh, on how we price coins, but we also might want to create a video on how to price beautifully toned coins because they do demand that premium. If you guys want a video like that, make sure to hit the like button. Up next, I wanted to show you guys a more affordable coin. This coin that I'm holding in my hand is a 1937S uh, Buffalo Nickel graded MS66 by NGC. And, you know, it's a nice coin, and when we actually take it over to Graysheet, Graysheet has this coin at around $75, um, and so that's a little bit low for uh, a decent coin like this, but when we go over to CoinFAQs, it kind of paints a different story. Um, they say that full retail on this coin is around $150, and so when I actually look at current comps on this coin, uh, they range anywhere between uh, you know, $75 to $190. So 75 and 190, just based on the image that you see, are a little bit of outliers. So the average amount, I would say, for this coin is around $100, $110. So if you can get a coin close to gray sheet and then offer it for around what these coins are selling for, you will be in good shape. And the last thing we're actually going to use is eBay to confirm this. Um, and we have three comps that we pulled up. One sold for $102 in a PCGS lab. One almost sold for $105 um, in an NGC slab, and the last one almost sold for $200. So, once again, if you guys kind of use gray sheet as an indicator or a point that you kind of want to stick around and then use that against price guide um, sold comps, you'll be able to narrow that space and make the profit that you're looking for. And ideally, most coin dealers want to make 10 to 15% on a coin. Um, so that's something that you have to take in mind when you're looking at all these sold comps or you're looking at gray sheet. And people sometimes say that, you know, 10 to 15% is not too much uh, when it comes to coins, but that's just kind of how uh, the hobby is structured and how it works. Um, and when you actually look back at it, we've sold uh, almost 2,000 coins in 2021. Um, so that 10 to 15% really does add up for you when you have the right coins to sell. Take it from me. I am a Morgan guy. I love Morgans uh, since the start of my collection. And what we realized about coins is that the more variety that you have at your coin shop or your coin show or your coin website, um, the more buyers that you end up reaching and having as clients. And then that ends up ultimately helping you sell coins at a faster rate, getting that 10 to 15% a lot quicker than most other dealers can. The next coin I want to show you guys is this nice 1880cc Morgan Dollar graded MS65 by PCGS. It's in a nice rattler holder and it is CAC approved. Um, when we look at gray sheet on this coin, uh, they're saying this coin should go for around $1,265 just because it is CAC approved. And then when we actually look at price guide, uh, price guide has this coin at around $1,300 in full retail. So not kind of, there's a kind of a small window for this coin, uh, but when you start to look at sold comps, you can see they're kind of all over the place. Um, one sold for $1,110 on Heritage, uh, one sold for $1,200 on David Lawrence, another one sold for $1,506 on Heritage, another one sold for $1,200 on uh, David Lawrence. So they're kind of all over the place. And then we actually use one more thing, which is eBay uh, to check out this coin. Uh, we couldn't find too many comps on it just because it has that CAC sticker and it's kind of rare for a coin like this. But we saw one that sold it for uh, $1,208 and it was an 1880cc in MS64 Plus with a CAC sticker. And the reason why I purchased this coin um, based, based on the knowledge that I have of the market is that I know that a rattler is rare, I know that the CAC sticker is rare, and I know that the coin date is actually rare as well. So that's kind of what gravitated me towards this coin, and I got it for an affordable price. Some dealers and collectors only use gray sheet, 
and sometimes that can actually hurt them just based on the ebbs and flows of the market and how it works. And vice versa, some dealers and collectors only use price guide or sold comps as their main indicator for what they should buy and sell a coin for. And what I'm advocating in this video is that if you use both, you'll have more um, kind of tools at your disposal when buying the right coin. Up next, we're going to be looking up this beautiful 1917 Standing Liberty Quarter, graded MS64 full head by PCGS. This is also the Type 1 version of the coin. Uh, when we take a look on Graysheet, they have this coin uh, written down as 550 as its bid. Um, and then when we take a look over at the price guide in CoinFax, um, they're saying full retail is around $800. So you're seeing those two kind of price points there. Now let's look at the sold comps. Sold comps for this coin in a PCGS holder uh, go from 660, 677, 481, 625, and 600. All from different sites, either auction sites or eBay. But when we look over at the Standing Liberty Quarters on eBay in the same condition, we see kind of the same trend. We see one sell for 650 plus shipping. We see one sell for 677 plus shipping. And we see one that actually got a discount, so they probably paid around $650 for the coin. So, you know, if you can get close to gray sheet when buying a coin like this, um, you'll end up making more money or getting that margin in on the coin. So it's kind of important because you see that gray sheet's $550, and then you also see that they're selling for around $600 and $650. So it gives you kind of that price indicator when taking a look at this standing Liberty quarter. Are you guys enjoying today's video? If you are, please smash that like button. Uh, comment what you've learned in this video. Has it helped you uh, become better at pricing coins yourself? Um, and subscribe if you're new because we come out with episodes every single week and you don't want to miss those. The last coin we would like to show you guys today is this nice 1944D Mercury Dime graded MS67 full bands by Annex. Um, this coin is nice because it has you know the color on the obverse and the reverse and it's really almost a problem free coin but when we take a look over at gray sheet um, they said they're saying that MS67 full band bid is around hundred and forty dollars and so that's a good bottom indicator for us to look at and then when we take a look over at coin facts um, they're saying this coin um, full retail is around hundred and seventy five dollars and then we're gonna jump down to sold comps uh, the last comp that I actually sold was on eBay for $125. So that's kind of a lower outlier that we might want to take off. Um, then there's one that sold on David Lawrence for $230. One on Heritage for $192. Another one on Heritage for $140. And then the last one in David Lawrence for $165. eBay didn't have the auction records for us to compare to, so we relied mainly on the CoinFAX auction records as price indicators. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. Comment what shows you guys are going to in January of 2022. Comment what you learned as well. And subscribe and hit the bell if you're new because, like I said, videos like this are coming out every week. And we want to give you guys as much um, information that we know as possible. So stay tuned and we will see you in the next video.